الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فمرحبا يا طلاب العلم بارك الله فيكم وجزاكم الله خيرا We continue our discussion about the great fundamentals of faith and the foundations of belief and the pillars of al-Iman and the proper creed that's in the heart of every true and honest and good believer. And we have been discussing the issue of al-Imanu billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala wa al-Imanu bi malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa al-yawm al-akhiri wa al-Iman bil qadri khayrihi wa sharri khayrihi wa sharrihi Today, we're going to have a class and we want to discuss the issues of believing in Allah. And we want to summarize some brief points. First, we must know that Allah, He is the Lord and the Creator and the Sustainer and provider of everything in this universe. Allah, this noble and beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the name, is the name of the true God. The true God who is worthy of worship, the true God who is almighty God, the true God worthy of worship, his name is Allah. His name is Allah. So therefore, the first point we must know that Allah is the name for the true God and the creator of the heavens and the earth. The name of the one who created the trees and the birds and the fish and the seas and the plants and the seeds and gave you eyes so you can see and uh, lungs so you can breathe and you have a heart that is beating and you're alive with a mind and you can think all of these things the one who created them and is providing for them his name is Allah his name is Allah we understand this point so therefore Allah he is the creator Allah he is the provider and the sustainer Allah, He is the one who has given everything its shape and its form. Allah is the creator. Allah is the provider and the sustainer. Allah, He is the one who has given everything its shape and its form. Allah, He is the one who shaped the trees in that manner. And He has formed the sky and created it and shaped it in that manner. And made it powerful and strong. And He's the creator of the clouds. And He's the one who created the wind. And he sends the wind, and the wind gathers the clouds. And uh, by the permission of Allah, the water is gathered in the sky, and then it falls on our heads, and we benefit from that, us and our crops and our animals. Alhamdulillah. The one who does this, his name is? His name is Allah, the creator of this universe, and the provider and the sustainer, the one who has given everything its shape and its form, the one who has given life to everything that is alive and the one who has authority and command and control over all things the one who can help you whenever you need help and the one who can save you whenever you're afraid and scared and the one who can protect you whenever you seek refuge and protection from all types of dangers it is Allah it is Allah he is Arab he is Arab Ar-Rabb, meaning he is the Lord and creator and sustainer and provider of all things, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the one who is disposing of the affairs of this universe. If we look into the night, into the day, and we see how they come in uh, alteration one after the other in such a beautiful manner, the one who is bringing the night time, this is, he, he is Allah. And the one who is causing the night time to go away and bringing the daytime, he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we understand this? The next point 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has the perfect life. He has no beginning and no ending. He's always in existence, powerful and strong. Before the creation of the heavens and the earth, Allah, He is alive, powerful and strong, in a manner befitting His majesty. Before the creation of the heavens and the earth, before the creation of the human being, before the creation of all of this universe, Allah, He, is, he was alive. He's always been alive. He's always powerful and strong. He is always Allah. He is always, eternally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no beginning. He has no ending. He does not get sleepy. He does not get tired. He does not get hungry. He does not get thirsty. He does not forget or anything like this. Rather, his life is perfect. Absolutely perfect, powerful, and strong. We understand this point? Allah, he is the only one who is alive and never dies. So from the beautiful names of Allah, likewise, Al-Hayy. Al-Hayy. But Allah, He is Al-Hayy. And likewise, there are some things in the creation that is Hayy also. Meaning that Allah, He is Al-Hayy. He is the one who is alive eternally with a perfect life. And there are some things in this creation that has life likewise. Like now, Alhamdulillah, we have life. And we are alive by the permission of Allah. But our life is deficient and our life is weak and our life will come to an end whenever Allah decrees. And we ask Allah to give us a good life and a good ending and a even better life in the hereafter. But as for Allah, He is Al-Hay, Al-Ladhi La Yamutu. Al-Hay, Al-Ladhi La Yamut. Allah, He is alive and He never dies. And this is... From the indications why he's worthy of worship. First and foremost, because he's the creator and provider of the universe. And he is the one who's given everything its shape and its form. And nothing happens in this creation except with his permission. And our very lives are in his hand and under his decree and command. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise our provision. And likewise our safety and security. And everything in this life besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that is alive besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will die. But as for Allah, he never dies. So the one who wants to trust and put his faith and believe in, some, in something. And he wants to worship and submit and surrender and hope for the help and aid from something, then that must be only Allah, because He is alive and He never dies. As for if somebody were to put their faith and trust in a rock, or to worship a stone, or to draw near to a cow, and to seek provision from a grave, or to worship an angel, or a prophet and messenger, and the likes like this, then all of these things, they were already alive and they have died, or they will be alive and they're going to die, or maybe they are something that does not even have life in the first place. So therefore, none of these things are worthy of worship. Rather, the one who created all of these things and shaped and formed all of these things and provided and sustained for all of these things, the one who's alive and he never dies, this is the one who's worthy of worship. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So far, we have two points. Who can remind us of them? Uh, who can remind us of them? Any brothers on the Zoom wants to speak? We open up their mic for them. So far, we had two major points. Who can remind us of them? The first one. Huh? That Allah is the name of? Of the Rabb. Of the Lord. What does that mean? Allah, He is? Huh? That's the name? Allah, that is the name of? The Creator and the Sustainer and the Provider of all things. It's the name of the true God. Who is worthy of worship. So in America they talk about God. But sometimes they're referring to Jesus. And other times they're referring to the creator. And other times they're referring to something else. But God. The true God. Who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He has a name. He has uh, the most beautiful name. And his name is Allah. His name is Allah. So the name Allah. This is the beautiful name of the creator of the heavens and the earth. The true God. Who is worthy of worship? God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. His name is Allah. His name is Allah. Okay? This is the case here. 
Allah Azza wa Jal, He is always alive and He never dies. He has no beginning and no ending. That's the second point. That's the second point. The one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who is the provider of all that exists, the sustainer, and the Lord and cherisher, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is disposing of the affairs, he is alive and he never dies. Uh, he does not have any beginning nor an ending. As for the human being, he has a beginning and the ending. As for the, the heavens and the earth, they have, there's a beginning and the ending. So the things that Allah created, He created them from nothing and brought them into existence. So at one time they were not existing and then after that they existed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is not like His creation. Rather, He's always existing, powerful and strong. He's always alive and He never dies. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is His perfect life. And likewise, He is the one who is providing and sustaining and giving life to everything. So this also is understood in another beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Qayyum and many times they come together Al-Hayyu wa Al-Qayyum so Al-Hayy is the one who was alive and never dies subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who has a perfect life with no deficiency or weakness whatsoever and Al-Qayyum is another beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that He is the one who is sustaining Himself and provide He is sustaining Himself and He is providing and sustaining for the rest of the creation. He's self-sustaining. He needs nothing whatsoever. He needs nothing whatsoever from any of His creations or from anything whatsoever. And likewise, He is providing and sustaining the creation. And likewise, He is providing and sustaining. The creation. Allah is the one who is alive and never dies. al hay al la yamut. So likewise Al-Qayyum. So Al-Qayyum is the one who is self-sustaining. And he is sustaining and providing for everything in his creation. So these are two beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Along with the other name that we learn likewise Al-Rabb. So these are very important beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jal. First and foremost, the most beautiful name and the proper name of the true God who's worthy of worship is Allah. And Allah, He is Ar-Rabb. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ar-Rabb is Al-Hay Al-Qayyum. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from here we see the third point that we take today. And that is that Allah, He is Ar-Rabb. And that Allah, He is alive and never dies. And that Allah, He is in no need of anything whatsoever and He is providing and sustaining all things and everything from His creation is dependent upon Him and needing Him for their very existence and provision. And we see from here that likewise Allah, He has all of the most beautiful names and perfect attributes and the most beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection. All of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're referring to Allah. Like Ar-Rabb is Allah, and Al-Hay is Allah, and Al-Qayyum is Allah, and Ar-Rahman is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These names refer back to Allah. Who is Allah? Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman is Allah. The most gracious and the most merciful. This is a name from the names of Allah. The most kind and forgiving. ar rauf al ghafur these are from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of his names are the most beautiful names. And they contain and indicate the most perfect and lofty attributes of perfection. No deficiency whatsoever. Allah, he has no deficiency whatsoever. From the beautiful names of Allah, al al basir that he is the all-seer. That means that he has the ability to see and he can see all things and his sight is perfect with no deficiency whatsoever. He can see all things, that which is close and that which is far, that which is in the light and that which is dark. It's no different for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. His seeing is perfect with no deficiency or weakness whatsoever. And likewise, Allah, he says in his book that he is as samir He is the all-hearing. So that means that Allah, He hears all things and His hearing is perfect with no deficiency whatsoever. 
with no deficiency whatsoever, no weakness, and uh, no deficiency, and uh, no error or no fault. Allah, can, He can hear that which is silent, and He can hear that which is out loud. He can hear the different languages, and He does not become confused, or He does not miss anything. Rather, He understands and knows all things that He hears and sees. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his life is perfect with no deficiency whatsoever. And likewise, all of his characteristics and traits are perfect with no deficiency whatsoever. Allah, he said in his book, he is Al-Alim, the all-knowing. That means that he has knowledge, but his knowledge is perfect. It has no deficiency whatsoever. His knowledge is not uh, something that he learned and then he didn't know before like the human being. La, Allah has always been all knowledgeable of all things. And His knowledge is perfect and absolute. And nothing is hidden from Him. And He does not forget. And He is never unaware of anything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the human being, maybe He knows. But before He knew, He did not know. Yes, before you know something, you have to learn. A human being is not born knowing everything. Whenever a child is born, he doesn't even know his own name. Somebody has to tell him. And after that, he knows. You understand? So somebody who's just born, he doesn't know his own name. He doesn't know anything. And then he learns after not knowing. As for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing like him whatsoever. Rather, his knowledge is perfect and absolute. And he knows all things at all times. And he's always the most knowledgeable and well aware of all things. And nothing is hidden from him. And he does not become negligent or forgetful or heedless subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is at hay. At hay. He's the one who's alive and never dies. He's the one who's alive and never dies. He has the perfect life. He is al-Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator and the sustainer and the provider and the disposer of the affairs. So because he is Allah and Allah, he is the one who has the most beautiful names and attributes of perfection with no deficiency whatsoever. And we say this, Understanding here and this principle here with regards to all of the names of Allah. With regards to all of the names of Allah. We understand that Allah, He is the Almighty. That means He has powerful and strong. And nobody can overcome Him or overpower Him. And whatever He says and commands and decrees, it will occur. And nobody can stop that because He is Al-Aziz. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He is also Ar-Rahim. He's the most gracious and most merciful. He's the most merciful and the most kind likewise. And His mercy is not because of weakness or not because of need from the creation. And His kindness is not because of dependency on anything or from the creation. Rather, it's out of pure goodness. Rather, it's out of pure goodness. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And His mercy is pure kindness. And also coupled with His wisdom. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And He has the absolute wisdom and puts everything in its proper place at its proper time with no deficiency or weakness or any bad meaning whatsoever. Al-Azizu Al-Hakim Tabaraka wa Ta'ala We understand this point? Alhamdulillah. So from here we see now that indeed Allah, He is the one who's worthy of worship. Because Allah, He is our rabb the creator and the provider and the sustainer. And everything belongs to him. He gave everything a shape in his form. He's taking care of everything. And whenever somebody is scared, he protects them. And whenever they're hungry, he feeds them. And whenever they're thirsty, he provides for them. And whenever they're sick, he's the one who cures them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then likewise, he's alive and he never dies. And he's strong and he's never weak. He's powerful and he's never tired or sleepy. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows all things and hears and sees all things. And nothing is hidden from him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, he's the one who's worthy of worship and if somebody needs something he is the one to call on because he is the one who can help you everything in the creation is under his command so if we want to get something from somebody that somebody can't give us anything unless Allah decrees so should we go to that person first or should we go to Allah we should go to Allah and then likewise we take the means and then likewise we take the means but our hearts and our love and our hope and our fear is directed to Allah. It's directed to Allah. So somebody who is outside playing and all of a sudden the wind starts getting really bad and then the tree starts falling and stuff like that, what does a person do? Huh? 
Ah, uh, you have to remember Allah and ask Allah to protect you and then just stand there in the middle of the yard? Huh? No. You ask Allah to protect you and ask Allah to help you and then you run to a place that inshallah will be safe. Like in the basement. But you don't run to the basement and hope the basement is going to protect you. You either you run to the basement and hope that Allah is going to protect you. Because the basement can, cannot protect anybody if Allah did not decree. But Allah has decreed that there are means that we must take in this life in order to achieve our goals from good and likewise being safe from harm. So from the means that Allah has decreed in this life to be safe from the wind is to go inside. Is to go inside, inside the house, inside the basement to be safe from the wind. But no one can truly be safe except by the permission of Allah. So while a believer, he takes those physical means and he goes inside and hides in the basement, his heart is directed to Allah, hoping that Allah will protect them and hoping that Allah will keep them safe. And if the wind goes away and everything is fine and nobody got hurt, then they will not say, man, oh, right, the basement's so strong. What would they say? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Allah protected us. Alhamdulillah, Allah guided us and directed us and helped us get to this safe place and time. And Allah turned the wind away from us and kept us safe because He's so nice and so kind. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand? So we take those physical means, but our heart is attached to Allah because He is the Rabb. Nothing happens in His kingdom and His creation in this universe except with His permission and except according to His will and decree. So therefore, we do not trust and put our reliance and faith in the people or in the trees or in the plants or in the rocks or anything in this creation. Whether we put our faith and our trust and our reliance upon the Creator and then we use the wisdom He has given us to take the proper means that He has allowed to do the good that we hope for and be safe from the harm that we're afraid of. We understand that. Alhamdulillah. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.